Hi guys, so I just got done making a super quick video for the pre-order of Spellbinder's new uh, advent calendar. Super cute, crafty advent calendar, and I'll give you a little peek of it here. It is available for pre-order, but another item that launched today also um, are these items here. So these were sent free of charge from my review, and of course all opinions are my own, and any links I have in the description box will be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you will purchase items through those links. So I want to say this clearly and correctly. So these are... Um, the holiday stitching web exclusives that Spellmind just put out, meaning they're not going to be anywhere else on any other site. It's only through their website, and they are limited edition. So it's a layered stitched diamonds set. Um, so you can pick up the dies themselves. As you can see, they have some stitching. We'll look at them in just a minute. Or the, and or, of course, the photopolymer stamp set that are created for them. I got to give them a good little whiff. I just love the smell of these guys. So <laughs> anyhow. Um, so as you can see, these are pretty much the diamond shape. If there's other, you know, uh, dies that you have that are diamond shape, these will probably coordinate really well with those two. With sympathy, happy holidays, happy birthday, congrats on your big day, hello there. So something for every, you know, a thanks, you did it. Oh, look at that. I was going to say, because we have the words like I love you or for you, but you can also stamp this little floral uh, arrangement there if you'd like or not. A note from me to you, feel better soon. And just a nice stamp set to coordinate back with this guy. Now this guy... There are nine dies in here, I believe, is what it is. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I think. <laughs> dice and nine. So we have the outer die. Great die to have. Again, this layers into, I would assume, an A2 size card. Like right on the, yeah, it's four and a quarter, so I'm sure it's five and a half in the other direction, right on the edge. With that stitch mark, so that'd be really nice to just have it for the layering. You can also pair it with this, of course and that gives you your stitching it gives you your little stitch holes or just the design right it looks really nice when you put this like on white on white and it just has like the texture to it with little stitching in the holes adorable so we have those pieces and then we have separate pieces like this cuts its own edge this cuts its own edge this one does two and this one does two so you can have it like this and you can do the stitching here this would just be solid you can imagine you can then take these pieces and do another type of stitching and have them maybe popped up well this one and this one and then this the top ones we have this piece that you can inlay right here and cut out that center if you want or just use it to cut you know your little sentiments and then behind that or on top of that we also have this piece that's its, its own piece again with the um, layering you can stitch it up or just leave it textured or however so today I'll probably use one of the stamps so I probably won't use that middle one because we won't need it right or you can even stamp on the paper and do your stitching all around it you wouldn't use this one but we like to layer so we'll probably have that and we'll see how we play with the other ones. So what I'm going to do is just grab some paper. And for this, I always like to use sturdy paper. And I use sturdy paper anyway. So anything that's like a good 300 GSM, like 110 pound, uh, would be, uh, I think, our best option. So I'm going to grab some paper and some threads. And we will get started. As far as mentioning threads, um, of course, you can pick up threads at different craft stores and things like that. But Spellbinders has their own like curated colors. So if you like the Spellbinders colorways and the way they do things, which is super elegant, really fresh, gorgeous, um, you'll find those colors there on their site. So I'll link that also in the description box, whatever they have for um, threads and things. And we can get started. I'll be right back. Okay, guys. So to get started, I'm going to cut this out of white paper. And I know white paper isn't like the most... Woo, you know, but we're going to do some fun stuff. And I have a, a, an idea of using those little topper pieces as an inlay. So it makes it really delicate. So let me just kind of trim this paper down around this guy. And so that is our main die, of course. And then the, the main inlay that will give you your, your stitch lines. But I think we want to be very careful when we do this. <laughs> I'm going to run all these guys through. And it will cut a little hole that makes it really nice and like gossamer. Because this cuts its own edge, right? So not that I'm going to use these. I'm just going to use them to make a space for us there. I could have left myself a little more paper, but I did not. So here we go. Um, well, I guess the first thing we can do is, let's say, fasten this. Get that stuck down. Right. And then get these pieces stuck down. And this inner piece will get covered up anyhow so I can just kind of make sure that's there put this guy here hold him down he's going to be held down from here to here so we want to make sure they don't move especially because there's a lot of moving parts here and you don't have to do it all at once I'm just doing it all at once you can definitely run the big plate with its inlay and then when it comes out just add these guys by eye you know 
There we go. And this one. And that does make it thinner. I just prefer to do this now than afterwards once we've stitched, because once we have the stitching down, that might impede being able to run it through your die cutting machine, right? So I'm going to run this through, and I'll so be right run back. this through one way, and then right back through the, you know, the other way, just to really get that imprinted in there. Because there is a lot going on, right, with all the little um, holes and everything, so you want to make sure. And always look at the back of your die. If you look at the back and you can tell something's not cut, and you can t definitely tell. I don't know how to explain it, but you'll see that... You don't really see the metal, you know, you might still see paper. That means it hasn't cut all the way through. So I didn't even look at this one. I just went one way and then back knowing that it's a lot going on and it might need that, you know. So I'm going to remove all of these. And then I'm going to go and grab some um, embroidery floss. I'm so impatient. I was like, I'll just take this back off. But you know what? Just be careful. To take these guys off and then go from there. Let's put this to the side here. One last piece, guys. Oh my goodness. <gasps> that is so pretty. I totally forgot I was gonna do that little edge stitch right there. That is really, really pretty. So there's that, and then I'm just gonna take a minute to clean it out, and I'll probably poke each and every single one. But if you wanted to, you know, use your scrubby scrub, I just will probably go through and just make sure each one is out. Okay, I'll be right back. You know, as I'm poking these just to get them out, you don't really have to do this because once you bring in your needle, your needle will help you poke it out. Just keep going, you know what I'm saying? So you don't really have to take the time to pre-poke, but I'm just doing it. Okay, I'll be right back. So I have that all cleaned up. I am just checking this out and I'm thinking, I need to put this into a shaker, don't I? I think I will. <laughs> because it has a plenty of space around here to do a shaker real easily. So we'll check that out in a minute. But I'm going to grab a needle. Now there's needles called sharps and there's needles called sewing needles and there's needles, you know, for all these different occasions. Um, definitely embroidery needles. I like to use one that has, like, these guys have a bigger eye, which is fine. But I like to use one that's kind of a middle size, I guess, eye. Because they don't really have to be sharp, right? We're not doing anything much. This would probably be better if it's a little bit duller than like this guy. But whatever needle you like to use, you are going to go through some areas a few times so you got to make sure that your needle will be able to accommodate that like thickness. I honestly don't know what colors I want to use. Do we want to go fall? That might be pretty. I mean, I, you know me, I like pastels. I like bright colors. <laughs> I mean, those are different things. But um, we could go more fall related. Let me look through here. I just have a ton of um, embroidery threads and see which ones I want to pick. I'm going to use these colors. They're really nice and dark, unexpected, lovely colors. So pull out a length that is comfortable for you to work with. For me, I just max it out, but you know, you really don't want to if you um, tend to get things raveled up and all that. But I'm going to take these apart so I have three strands. These are six strand. Um, embroidery threads so I just pull like three I usually try to get the closest three I can see I picked one from the other side but the three that are closest to each other is probably what you want to get so there's not a lot of tangling when you undo them and I'm just pulling holding this with my hand pulling the other area and kind of keeping them <laughs> separate if I can that way they don't get tangled on the other side once I get there so like these guys I don't know they like these colors they're just really fall like Okay, and then we're going to put these into our um, needle, of course. And, of course, you can use a, a threader. You pop it through there and pull it through. But when you use a threader, you're basically going to pull six strands through plus the threader. So, like, eh, sometimes it doesn't work as well when you have three strands. But there we go. Okay. And at the end, we can do a knot. Or you can just kind of hold it in your hand because sometimes the knot falls apart anyway. So if you do a knot, I just kind of do that and make it kind of big so that way it doesn't come through. And I think I'm going to use this color on the center. So I'm just going to start here, wherever you like. And for whatever reason, as I look at this, I want to go to the center then out. But honestly, you can just go up and then back through, up and back through, up and, you know. But I don't know, I want to go like to this middle one. It's whatever you like. And then you have to go back up through. 
this guy. I am holding the knot in my hand though, just in case, even though it's a huge knot, it's not going to go anywhere. And pull that guy. And then the next one. And why? I don't know. I'm going to go back up through this middle. I think this is really sweet because honestly, even though it's a large thing, it's going to be really quick. I mean, this is going to work up this, you know, and I'm going to go to the right. I'm sorry, to the left. And then back up the middle and to the right. Uh, variegated cotton threads look really pretty because they change in color as you're going. And it just gives it some movement, you know. And then back up through the middle again, and then to the left, and then to the right. Okay, so I'll do that, and I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done. Going back and back and back and back. When okay. I went up and down, up and down, I ended up here, right? So from here, I can just go right over, go to the next one, unless you want to change colors, you know. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to that middle one, and just because I want to, I don't know if it makes it look any different, but it might just because it looks like it's fanning out doot, 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 like this like my palm trees outside if you cut them a certain way they look fine but if you cut them at this angle every time you do it it looks like it's braided so it does give it a little bit of a different look I think so anyway I'm gonna go up this way and up this way and then again to the right and then to the left and I'll just keep doing that and I'll go around this whole thing so when I get to the end I'll probably be over here then I'll go into this one, do, 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 do. and then I'll go into this one, do, 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 do. same thing. I do want to check in and show you, like, I'm at the end of this, and I probably took it a little too far, but again, I'm going to stick this on, um, what's it called, like, on a shaker background, so I'm just going to put it through here. I probably would do the same thing even if I was just sticking it down to a card. You can definitely make a knot, tie it off, but I'll probably just make sure that this is stuck down like this whenever I go to, um, actually adhere this. Oh, and look at me putting a knot before I even put it through my uh, needle here. And then I'll just start up again. And another thing you can do, you don't have to go all the way down and around, down and around. You can go like this and come back down. But it's just, it, it's better if you do a systematic way. It just looks nicer when you're done, you know. So again, I'm just going to pop this through here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Hopefully. Yep, there we go. And am I looking over my glasses? I certainly am. <laughs> I got progressive lenses last year, and whenever I still want to see up close, I just like take my glasses off. Okay, so I'll continue. This is basically where I was, where I was going, up here. And then again, back down here. This has taken literally... <laughs> maybe two minutes uh, I'm doing it slowly on the camera but like in real life I just went and sat in front of my TV and I came right back to show you that I ran out of this so now I'm just gonna go up to this next one right and same thing again giving it a nice tension nice pull so you have a nice looking threads um, with this one you could probably do thicker threads if you wanted like I split them into three you can split them into two if you want something thinner but I think I don't know it feels like if you went with six you can probably do it but see how this is really loading up in here you don't want that to be too squished because then it's going to start not looking great. <laughs> so, anyhow. Okay, so I'll finish this up. And then I'll get my needle loaded with this brown color. And we're basically going to do the same thing. I'm going to come up this hole, uh, down the center, up the hole, and this one, down this one, down this one. Same thing. Okay, so we're back. this ready. Now, when I say I make a big knot, it's a very loose knot. So hopefully, you know, when I go to glue it down, it's not going to be bulky in the back. But it is a big, loose knot. <laughs> so... This one we're going to start up again the same way. This time my knot isn't as big, so I'm going to be very careful that it doesn't come through. But again, you can just leave a long string and just hold it or tape it down, you know, with some double-sided tape as soon as you get it going. Just don't take the back off the one side. Or just regular tape. <laughs> and I'm holding with my hand on the back side to keep a nice tension. And I'm going to do the exact same thing I did with the little guys. Just this and this, and then go back in here. And then to the left back in here to the right you know all that same thing and even when I get to the bottom I'll just cross when I get back over here I'll cross from here to over here right just like I was doing so I'll be back okay guys so I just finished this up and put a little knot there I'm just gonna cut that off and so that's what it looks like on this side and again, I don't know if you can see how it like crisscross, crisscross, crisscross. It just looks different than if you were just to 
I don't know, do it a different way. But anyway, so I have a piece of acetate because I said, well, we'll make it a shaker. Why not? So I am just going to put plenty of glue. For that glue. Now, this is going to be a little bumpier. I was just going to put the, um, what's this stuff called? The um, double-sided adhesive here and then just put acetate around this area. But I'm still going to go ahead and just put glue all around and just really hold it down. Sorry, in here, definitely here, as well as I can. Again, we do have those little lumps and bumps and things from the, um, the embroidery floss. And then, uh, it took about a yard for each one of these corners so it's really nice to have a whole fresh skein instead of kind of coming over and even though I did that but if you're gonna do a whole fresh skein so you don't have to run out in the middle it takes about a yard in each corner just so you know that have that info there I'm gonna hold that down for a good while so pretty and in the meantime I'm gonna take this I think Oh, that crimson's really pretty. Sorry, I'm talking away from the camera. But this mahogany color I have been in love with. And look at that. Look how perfectly that matches. So I think what I'm going to do is stamp. Uh, you know, let's do um, hello there. Why not? I have a nice piece here, but I'm just going to use that. And then we have the die. It's just going to cut this outer edge. And all I'm going to do is a little of this. A little embossing buddy. And whoop, some of this guy and some gold ink and then I'll top it off with some gold embossing powder also. So let me grab my gold ink and I'm just going to stamp this again. Really just want the stickiness from the ink so even if you don't get it quite right. Oh, that's not good. Let's go over here. Um, I generally use a stamp positioner just to make sure but we're doing this like this today. Ooh, let me see what that looks like because, like I said, even if it's a little bit rough looking, um, when you pour the powder on there, it helps out. We'll see what this looks like. Pretty good. And so I'm just going to heat set that and I'll be right back. So these are different parts for our card. I do have an A2 size card base here ready to go. And I'm going to leave the background of the card base white also, I believe. But if you want to layer it up, you can definitely layer it up. I think what I'm going to do is have, again, a two size. We're going to put some little sprinkles in there. Ooh, what is that? Okay. <laughs> put that on top of there. And then this guy's going to nest in there with some gold sprinkles, I think. <laughs> or sequins or whatever I find. So... To finish this off, just making sure that's really down. I'll be right back after I get some of the items that I'll need, and then I'll go ahead and pair that up with the die, which is this one, and I'll run that through, okay? Just really make sure that's nice and centered, especially since it's going to be really our focal point there. And always tape down, trying not to touch the embossing so you don't accidentally like pull it off. I'll rearrange that a little bit and I'll run that little through a piece here. A little bit off, that's okay. Oh, you know what? Hmm. That's okay. I was going to do another gold one in like a drop shadow, which you can definitely do, but this is good. I'll leave that there. And then I just need to trace this around with some foam adhesive. And I have this one that's a little bit thicker than I need, but what I'm going to do is just cut it down as I use it. So on this back side, we'll put that over there. We just need to frame this out. And that's about right, but I am going to have to cut this down. Generally, you want like a quarter inch foam. And I am currently out, so I'm just going to take pieces like that and frame this out, okay? The whole thing, keeping it out of view from this opening. Oh, I'll be right back. Guys. I just got a little schmutz in there. All right, we're going to put that guy there. And again, I wasn't going to back it up, but if you want to put like another color of paper, then that brings in just another color, would be lovely. I have these little cream colored like sequins, which I really like. 
and then some really really gold ones and again I don't put a ton because I want them to actually shake and move so let's get those mixed up together and you could put another little piece in the center here if you want a little more support there I'm gonna clean this little thing out there's something there we go and this is right on card base so I'm gonna do that I always give it a squish and you know me I like to turn it over and squish from the back a really really good one <laughs> and that is that and we have those beautiful sequins in there and then we have our little piece here that I will I don't know. I guess I can put a little dimensional. That's so put some dimensional. I'll be right back. Where are you going? I'm gonna let that do the talking. But I mean, you can always layer up some little flowers in here, some extra little doodads, maybe some pearls, whatever it is that you like. I'm just put that on some dimensionals, and there it is. Super simple stitching on this one guys so um, I hope you like uh, the project I'll have the images coming up I'll have the links in the description box so again this is a new web exclusive uh, they have that new um, advent calendar and then Simon Hurley has some new items there on um, Spellbinder's site too I'll link all those different things and keep an eye out for my videos on those items coming up very soon alright guys thank you so much thank you Spellbinder's for signing designs for review I'll see you guys at the next one bye now